The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, text number 24, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded August 27, 1972, in Los Angeles. Translation. The firewood is the transformation of the earth, and smoke is better than the raw wood, and fire is still better, because by fire we can derive so many benefits by superior knowledge, or Vedas. Similarly, rajas quality of matter is better than tamas quality, but sattva quality is the, is the superior quality by which one can realize the absolute truth. Parthiva daruno dhuma Parthiva Suppose you want fire So there are so many stages earth then there is wood wood is produced from earth from wood there is first instance there is smoke, and then comes the fire. But you require the fire. When you get fire, you can uh, get so many things done through fire. Electricity, all industry is going on through fire. Your household affairs, cooking, that is also you require fire. Uh, for your living condition, you require fire, heat. So fire is necessity. Not the earth, neither the wood, nor the smoke. Similarly, uh, although Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesha, they are one from Krishna, they are different incarnation of different modes of material nature. But the, actually Vishnu is required. Brahma, Brahma Darsana, if you want to see the absolute truth, then neither Brahma nor Shiva is required, but Vishnu is required. The example is just like if you want to uh, have your work done, then fire is required. The wood is also another stage of fire. The smoke is also another stage of fire. Uh, but as fire is necessity, similarly, to come to the platform of goodness, that is necessary especially in this human form of life. In other forms of life, they are mostly in the ignorance, just like the earth. The earth has got potency to produce wood, trees and plants, but there are some earth and plot of land, it is uh, not produce anything, desert. It has got the potency. If you pour water, it has got the potency to produce wood. But in that, similarly, the mode of ignorance, those living entities, those who are in the mode of ignorance, they cannot have any knowledge of the Absolute Truth. That's not possible. Therefore, it is gradual evolution from mode of ignorance to mode of passion. And passion, there is little activity. Uh, it's like animal, uh, they have got activity. Uh, just like a dog you have seen in the beach and other places, uh, running very swiftly here and there. But there is no meaning. A monkey is very active. Uh, you have not seen monkey in your country, in our country, there are monkeys. Unnecessarily creating disturbance. Uh, 
Uh, but they're very active. Uh, uh, but human beings, they are not so active, but they have got brain. They are working with brain. So, foolish activity has no meaning. Without brain, simply active, that is dangerous. Uh, sober activity is required. That's like a high court judge. Uh, he is paid very lump sum uh, money, but he is sitting on his chair and simply thinking. Uh, the others may think that we are working so hard, we are not getting so big salary, and this man is getting so big salary. He is sitting only. Hmm? Because foolish activity has no value. It is dangerous. So this modern world, they are very active, but they are foolishly active in the ignorance and passion, rajasthan. Uh, therefore there is uh, confusion, activity. Foolish activity, there is accident. Uh, a sober activity required. Uh, <coughs> because just like unless you come to the platform of fire, uh, you cannot utilize the material things. Fire is required. Similarly, to make your life successful, there is gradual evolution from aquatics to plant life, plant life to insect life, insect life to reptiles, reptiles to birds life, then beast life, then human life, then civilized life. In this way, gradually evolution now we come to the platform of human life, uh, and the Vedic knowledge is meant for the human being, not for these other animals. Therefore it is said, dhrumas tasmat ogni stroimaya. By Vedic injunction, the human society, civilized human society, they require to perform sacrifices, fire sacrifices, just like we do in an all uh, auspicious ceremonies. Uh, it is said that through the fire uh, God eats. We uh, give to the fire the grains and the fruits and other things. That is, uh, means God is eating through fire. So sacrifice means you sacrifice for God, and God is accepting. God is accepting also when you offer prasadam to the Lord. He is accepting. But we want to see. That is our disease. We want to see everything. And therefore the fire sacrifice you can see that whatever is offering, it is being eaten now. God can eat in many ways, because a third-class man, they want to see that God is eating. Therefore this is required, sacrifice. God, as it is stated in the Brahma Sangita, angani jasya sakalindriya vitti manti his every limb of the body is as good as the other part of you. Just like we have got our eyes, with eyes we can see, but we cannot eat. But God can do that. He can see, eat also uh, uh, through the eyes. Angani, just sakalindriya vritti mante. He can hear with eyes. He can eat with his ear. He can see with his tongue. That is God. Every part of the body is equally good as other part of the body. That is called absolute truth. 
However, this body is relative. I cannot see. I am, if I close my eyes, I cannot see with my hand. But Krishna can do that. So when we offer Krishna food stuff, He eats. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, asnāmi patram puṣpam phalam toyam jumi bhaktya prajacchati tadahaṁ asnāmi tadahaṁ bhaktu puṣitam asnāmi prajatātmana. Krishna says that my devotee, when he offers me something eatable with faith, love and devotion, I eat. Is he speaking lies? No, he eats. Uh, but the atheist class of men, they do not know. They see that the plate is full. Uh, uh, sometimes, if he's forced, he can eat also. There are some incidences. Anyway, he is simply by seeing, he can eat. Simply by seeing. If you don't believe, that he is not eating, but from the Vedic injunction we can understand that you put the food plate before the Lord, and Lord is seeing, and that is his eating. He is not hungry, but he can eat the whole universe at a time. This is God's position. He can devour the whole universe. As we have seen the Virat uh, Rupa. So, this yoga performance required uh, fire. Tasmad Agni Straimai. Straimai means Vedas. There are three departments of Vedas. Therefore, it is called Trai. Trai means three uh, Karmakanda, Ganakanda, and Upasanakanda. So in karma kanda platform, fruitive activities, the sacrifice is required, and for sacrificing you require fire, so that you can gradually understand what is the absolute truth. Similarly, if you want to see Brahma, the supreme absolute truth, then you have to come to the platform of goodness. You cannot remain on the platform of uh, ignorance and passion. Therefore our training to the student is to bring him to the platform of goodness, brāhmaṇa. brahma jānāti iti brāhmaṇa, brahma-darsana. Uh, brahma-darsana means one who has seen brahma or one who has known brahma. He is called Brahman. Brahman is not that a being born in the family of a Brahmin and uh, having a sacred thread uh, to send to earth. No. Brahmana means one has seen. Brahma darsana. Darsana means seeing. So, in order to see the Absolute Truth. Uh, <coughs> One has to come to the uh, platform of goodness. Tamasasu rajasta smat sattam jat brahmadasa. Just sattam. The platform which is called goodness. And in that platform you can see God or you can realize what is absolute truth. So the so-called scientists, they are trying to find out the ultimate source of everything, the absolute truth. But because they are not on the platform of goodness, how they can see? They cannot see. Uh, the absolute truth is coming before us in person and is showing his activity as absolute truth. 
and big, big acharyas, they are accepting him, the absolute truth. Still, these rascals, they cannot see. The so-called scientist rascals, they cannot see. Because they are not on the platform of goodness. They are in the platform of ignorance. Therefore, they evil, just like Krishna, when he appeared on this planet, there are so many millions of people, but very few of them could understand that he was the supreme personality of God. Only the inhabitants of Vrindavan and the Pandavas and some others. Note that all of them, because all of them cannot understand. Manushyanam sahasrishu kaschit jatati siddhaya. Out of many millions of persons, kaschit, somebody is trying to become a Brahmin. That is siddhaya. Kaschit jatati siddhaya. Siddhaya means to become successful. And jatatamapi siddhyanam, and out of many millions of persons who has become successful, uh, out of them some may know what is Krishna. So, uh, anyway, Brahmadarsanam. Brahmadarsanam is the preliminary understanding of the Absolute Truth. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Sabdhat. Uh, in the preliminary understanding, impersonal Brahma is realized. And if you make further progress, then you, are, you realize the localized aspect, Paramatma, Ishara Sarvabhutana, Vridhi Ishara In your heart you will see. Uh, and uh, further progress means you will see. Uh, Vishnu or Lord Krishna, uh, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan, the one thing, thing is one, uh, absolute, but a defined capacity. Just like the, I have given several times, that the sun and the sun sign and the, and the sun glow and the inhabitants of the sun glow. They are one, but at the same time different. Uh, to become in the sun sign does not mean that you are in the sun globe. Uh, that requires uh, a very good qualification how to... They cannot enter even into the moon planet and what to speak of entering the sun planet. It is fiery. So, as it is not possible, for ordinary man. But there is sun planet and they, there are inhabitants also. They are bodies also, fiery body. Therefore it is so glowing and it is so hot that the temperature from ninety millions of miles it is giving us temperature. Uh, it is made of fire, that's a fact. Uh, so, uh, as by different position, one can understand complete sun. Uh, ordinary man, those who are in the sun sign, they cannot understand what is the temperature in the sun glow. And even if you go nearer to the sun glow, it is very difficult to enter into the... Uh, within the planet. Uh, similarly, the first understanding of the Absolute Truth is impersonal Brahma, Brahma Dasa. Then if you can make further progress, then you will see that absolute truth within your heart by yoga system. And if you make further advance, then you see him eye to eye and give your service, render your service personally. These are the stages. So, uh, 
on the whole, to understand the absolute truth, even Brahma Darsana, absolute truth, you have come to the light, not in the darkness. If you want to see the sun at least, then you have come to the sun sign. Not that in the dark room, closing your doors, you can see sun sign. You have to come out. Tamasīma jyotirgama. Therefore the Vedic injunction is don't remain in the darkness. Uh, come out to see the light. Uh, just like in the morning, somebody is sleeping, closing his doors and windows tightly, and he is sleeping, snoring, although it is ten o'clock daytime, he thinks it is night going on. And he's enjoying sleeping. Then darkness. Uh, rascal. And those who are advanced, they rise early in the morning at four o'clock. Now there will be sunshine. Prepare. There is a difference. The same human being. One is in the darkness, one is in the passion, and one is in the goodness. And if you come to the goodness, then you see Brahma Darsanam, you can understand what is the absolute truth. If you remain in ignorance and passion, you cannot see, you cannot know. You can go on with your so called rascal and talks about uh, God, but it is not possible. Uh, you cannot understand God or absolute truth by eating meat, drinking, and having uh, illicit sex and gambling. No, that's not possible. Oh. Then you will have to remain in the darkness for good, and next life you again become cats and dogs. That's all. Because you are given the opportunity to come to the light, but if you neglect it, if you think that natural life, animal life, to become naked and do all nonsense, then all light, you, next life, you become a tree naked, stand up naked for ten thousands of years. You want to be naked? That's all right. Nobody will protest. So many trees are standing naked, so many animals are loitering in the street naked, nobody protests. But uh, in human society, if you become naked, then you will be punished by law. Hmm? But they are thinking, they are advancing by becoming naked. Hmm? This is the knowledge, ignorance. Hmm? So Krishna will give you opportunity to remain naked, become animals, trees, like that. So that is not our aim of life. Our aim of life, the human form of life, is meant for understanding the absolute truth. Athāta brahma jīgyāsā, that is Vedānta Sutra says. Brahma jī, what is Brahma? What is absolute truth? This inquisitiveness must be there in human life. Then it is human being. Otherwise it is animal. The animal does not inquire what is absolute truth. Neither the Vedanta Darshan and all these Vedic scriptures are meant for the animals. They are meant for human being. A human being has got the brain. He can understand. He can be trained up to become a Brahmin. These are the opportunities. So Krishna consciousness movement is giving this great opportunity to the human society. Uh, they are training them uh, how to become a Brahmin. Uh, we are giving them all important Vedic literature translated to English and other. This is the greatest boon uh, to make human life successful. But if, if the people want to remain in darkness, then what we, can we do? Uh, but not that everyone wants to remain in darkness, 
So many people are coming forward and taking this movement seriously. They are first class men, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Manusthanam sahasreshu kaschit jatati siddhaye jatatam api siddhyanam kaschit bhittimam tattva. So, take advantage of this great movement, come to the platform of goodness and see the absolute truth, then your life is successful. Otherwise you remain like cats and dogs, eat like cats and dogs. If you want, nature will give you facility. Prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasa. Prakriti means nature. He is giving by nature. Just like if you infect, if you become infected with some disease, so you will get that disease. It is nature's way. If you touch fire, your finger will be burned. Not that nature has to make a particular arrangement. By nature it is there. Similarly, if you remain like cats and dogs, then by nature you get the body of cats and dogs. There is no necessity of making separate attempt. How shall I become a dog? How shall I become a cat? Prakita kriyamanani. Prakiti nature will give you. Prakita kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvas. How nature is helping? Nature, this material nature is matter. How it is being done, how matter is working. That is answer is given in the Bhagavad Gita. That Mayadhaksena prakriti suyate sacharacharam. He is acting under my direction. God is giving direction. How is giving direction? Ishara sarva bhutanam riddhese. God is situated within your heart. When he sees that you are very much anxious to become a cat, a dog, he knows. He asks nature. They are just giving a body of God. He wants to become a dog. He wants to become a hog. Give him a body of a hog. He wants the body of a tree. He wants the body of God. Give him the body of God. Anything you can take. You can have the body of a dog or you can have the body of a God as you want. Krishna, God is so kind. Whatever you want, you take. Uh, that is, nature is helping. Nature is working under the direction of God. And whatever you want, He understands because He is sitting with you within the heart like two birds. One bird uh, is eating, one bird is simply seeing. The seeing bird is God, and eating bird is the living entity. So, that is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Saravasya chaham ridhisan nivishtya. Fifteen chapter. I am sitting in everyone's heart. Matta smiti jnanam apohanancha. One doctor Arkwad in our college life, he, he was a Scotch man, so he did not believe in the karma bhav. And there are so many philosophers like that. But actually, Ishara, Krishna, God is sitting within your heart. He is witness. In the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Anumantya, Upadrashtya. Upadrashtya means witness. This is also explained in the Upanishad. That one bird is eating, another bird is seeing. The seeing bird is God. Upadrashtya. He is noting down that you like this. He is noting down that you like to eat such and such thing. Now you find so many animals they are eating differently. The hog is eating stew, the tiger is eating fresh blood, another animal is something something. All facilities are there. Open hotel. You come on and take whatever you like. And the witness, 
Uh, God is so kind. Uh, this uh, person has no discrimination of eating. So let him become dog, hog. The hog has no discrimination. Whatever you think. You give him halwa, he will eat. You give him stool, it will eat. Uh, there are goats, so many, so many animals, and no discrimination. The human being, there must be discrimination. Uh, everything is eatable. Then why don't you eat stool? Uh, no. Your eatable is different. It must be different from the animal eatables. Your teeth is different. Your nature is different. A child, a child, you cannot give anything. So he wants, he wants to drink milk. Or natural food. Uh, artificially, the child is taught to eat something else. If you, if the child simply drinks mother's milk for six months, it becomes stout and strong for the whole life. Because that is natural food. But there is no milk in the mother's breast, artificial. Now how the child will be healthy? Uh, this is modern civilization. Uh, otherwise, if we get our natural food, there is no question of disease, there is no question of doctor's will. So that is science, that is human civilization. One who knows how to eat, how to sleep, how to um, have sex life, how to defend, that is human civilization. Without knowing in the modes of ignorance, simply animal life. They are simply like animals. They can, that is not civilization. Therefore we have come to the platform of goodness to see Brahma-darsana. That is civilization. Thank you very much.